Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is day 8 of solving Pandas leaf code problems. In this video, we'll be diving into some new problems that will help us level up our Panda skills even further. Let's get started. First problem is number of employees which report to each employee. We are given a data frame with following columns, employee ID, name, reports to, and age. Our goal is to generate a report that shows manager's employee ID and name, number of employees who report to that manager, average age of those employees rounded to the nearest integer. Let's walk through the approach step by step. To begin, we need to identify employees who are not managers. We can do this by filtering out rows where the reports to column is not null. Since a non-null value in reports to means the employee is managed by someone else. Once we have filtered out the non-manager rows, we can group the data by reports to column, which represents the managers. For example, if the report to has the value 9, We'll group all the employees who report to 9 together. In this group 9, we will count the number of employees that is the number of reports and calculate the average age of the employees in that group. Once we have gathered the statistics, we will need to fetch the corresponding manager details. This can be done by filtering the original data frame where the employee ID matches the reports to column in the stats data frame. Let's dive into the code. We begin by filtering out non-manager rows. This can be done using not NA function to check for non-null values in the reports to column. Then we use group by on the reports to column to group employees by their manager. To count the number of reports, we use aggregate function with the size method which gives the number of reports in each group. Next, to calculate the average age of the employees reporting to each manager, we specify the mean method on the age column. Since the problem asks for average age to be rounded to the nearest integer, we'll apply seal method when decimal value is greater than 0.5 and use round for rounding down otherwise. We use this custom rounding method to avoid banker's rounding, which can sometimes produce counterintuitive results particularly when average is exactly halfway between two integers. We can also add a small value to the average age column to ensure more consistent rounding instead of the lambda method. Now that we have manager statistics data frame created, let's retrieve the managers by using isInt function. This will match the employee ID in the given data frame with the report to column in the manager statistics data frame and create a new managers data frame. Next, we'll use merge method to join these two data frames, specifying left on employee ID and right on report 2. Finally, we'll extract the required columns from the merge data frame and sort the results by employee ID as specified in the question. We are given a data frame with three columns, product ID, new price and change date. Our goal is to find the prices of all products on August 16th, 2019. The assumption is that price of all products before any change is 10. Let's walk through this example. For product ID 1, there are 3 rows. We need to find the price on 16th. We already have the price for that date, so we return it. For product ID 2, there are 2 rows. One with a change date of 14th and other with 17th. Since we need the price on or before 16th, we discard the row with 17th and return the price from 14th. For product ID 3, there are no rows with a change date on or before 16th, so we return the default price which is 10. So how do we approach this problem? First we'll group by product ID, then we filter the data frame to include only rows where change date is on or before 16th. After filtering we have two possibilities. If there are any rows left, we return the price for the latest change before or on 16th, if there are no rows, we return the default price of 10. Now let's dive into coding. We'll start by filtering the data frame for product ID 1 and apply the condition for the change date. Next we use IDX max to get the index of the latest date after filtering. Then we can use dot lock method to fetch the price based on that index. Now let's handle the case for product ID 3. Since no rows meet the filtering condition, we'll get an error. 
To handle this, we first check if our filtering condition returns any rows using any method. If no rows are found, we default to the price of 10. Finally, we apply this function for each product by grouping by product ID. In this problem, we are given a data frame with the following columns, employee ID, department ID, and primary flag. When an employee belongs to multiple departments, one of the departments will have the primary flag set to Y. If the employee belongs to only one department, the primary flag is set to N. Our goal is to generate a report that lists all employees with their primary department. Let's break down the steps to achieve this. For employee ID 1, since they belong to only one department, we return that department ID as it is. For employee ID 2, there are two rows. Here we return the row where the primary flag is Y. Similarly for employee ID 3, there is only one row, so we return the department ID. However, for employee ID 4, there are three rows, we return the department where the primary flag is Y. Basic idea is to group by employee ID and handle two cases. If there is only one department, then we return it. If there are multiple departments, then return the one with primary flag set to Y. Now let's dive into coding section. We'll use the IDX max function to achieve this. The IDX max function returns the index of the maximum value in a column. For example, department ID column value is 6 and the primary flag column value is 1, which in our case is Y. Since Y has a higher ASCII value than N, IDX max will return the index of the row where primary flag is Y. Now let's group by employee ID and we apply IDX max to primary flag column which will give us the index of the row with the maximum flag value within each group. Finally, we filter the data frame using these indices and return the necessary columns. We are given a data frame with two columns, ID and num. Our goal is to identify which numbers in the num column appear at least three times consecutively. Let's walk through the approach step by step. To solve this, we'll use a rolling window. Here's the idea. We'll create a rolling window of size 3 and check if all the elements in the window are same. If the length of unique elements in the window is 1, then we know that the element is a consecutive occurrence. Say this is our data frame. Here we must not return 2 twice, so if a number appears more than 3 times in a row, we will return it only once by dropping the duplicates. Let's dive into the coding. We'll start by defining the rolling window with a length of 3. We'll use lambda function to perform operations on every window. For example, if we use x.sum, where x is our window of 3 elements, this gives sum of elements in the window. To check unique values in each window, we check if the set of values has a length 1, implying all elements in the window are same. Now let's time this operation on a data frame level. And we can see that when we use raw equal to true, the operation runs faster since we'll be working with NumPy arrays instead of Panda series or data frame objects. We'll create a new column called is consecutive nums that flags the rows where the number is part of consecutive sequence. Finally, we'll filter the data frame to return only the rows where is consecutive nums is 1 and we'll drop the duplicates to ensure each number only appears once. In this problem, we are given a data frame with three columns, x, y, and z. Each row represents the lengths of three line segments, and our task is to determine whether these three segments can form a triangle. To form a triangle, the sum of any two sides must be greater than the third side. This gives us the following conditions. x plus y greater than z, x plus z greater than y, and y plus z greater than x. We need to check if all three conditions are met. If they are, we will return true, otherwise false. 
we do this operation row wise or we can use vectorized approach which operates element wise let's dive into coding first we'll define a function that checks the triangle condition for each row the function will receive x y and z as parameters and will return true if all three conditions are satisfied then we'll use apply method to apply this function across all rows since we want the result as yes or no instead of a boolean value we'll use dot replace to convert the boolean values to the corresponding strings finally we store this resulting series in a column named triangle and return the final data frame In this problem we have a data frame with following columns person id person name weight and turn a group of people is waiting in line to board a bus but the bus has a wait limit of 1000 not everyone will be able to board so the task is to identify the name of the last person who can board the bus without exceeding the wait limit to solve this we need to track the cumulative wait as people board the bus let's walk through an example alice with turn 1 boards first with a wait of 250 Next Alex boards with a weight of 350 after that John boards with a weight of 400 at this point the cumulative weight is 1000 since we have reached the limit no one else can board so the approach here is we sort the data frame by the turn column to ensure the boarding order next we calculate the cumulative weight using cumulative sum method on the weight column and check when the cumulative weight reaches or exceeds 1000 and we return the last person who boards without exceeding this limit Let's dive into coding. We use sort values to sort by the turn column to ensure the correct boarding sequence. Next, we apply cumulative sum method to the weight column to compute the cumulative weight as each person boards. And now we filter out rows where the cumulative weight exceeds 1000. Finally, we return the last row using tail method. Alternatively, you can use i log to retrieve the same result. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other videos in Pandas Lead Code playlist. Feel free to leave a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you might have. See you in the next one.